been a little over two years since Slightly Mad Studios and Bandai Namco released Project Cars. Amid much success, largely community funded through a Kickstarter campaign, it was a bold attempt to take on the veteran stable series of Forza and Gran Turismo. Fast forward to 2017 and the sequel is on the eve of release just before its racing game rivals. Project Cars 2 continues to build on the success of its predecessor and is a worthy addition to the racing game series. But it's no Sunday afternoon drive in a classic car. And welcome to Roy's review of Project Cars 2. Published by Bandai Namco and developed by Slightly Mad Studios, Project Cars 2 is available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC from the 22nd of September 2017. It is a well produced title and a worthy second instalment to what I believe will become a strong series of racing games that brings nearly every form of motorsport into one title. From open wheelers, GT, prototypes, rallycross and touring cars. With an extensive list of cars to choose from, 182 to be exact, as well as tracks from 60 locations, Project Cars 2 has almost double the content of the previous title. All the main cars and tracks from the original title return, but the introduction of rallycross, as well as the Pirelli World Championship and Indy cars, Slightly Mad Studios have been forging relationships with major auto manufacturers as well as motorsport bodies in order to gain official licensing for certain categories. Not since the old Tucker driving games has a motorsport racing game had so much to offer. Now before I continue, I will include this disclaimer. I am by no means a pro when it comes to driving games, but I'm no noob either. But I'm also not a pro. Usually my settings lean in the middle of the road between amateur and expert. However, on first loading into the game, I felt I was back to being a noob. It wasn't that I sucked, it was just, well, Project Cars 2 aims to be a racing sim, and it does a damn good job at achieving it. Well, was it that majorly different? No! No different! Only different in your mind. You must unlearn what you have learned. Whilst there are some major overhauls to the driving physics, basically it was back to driving school for the first half hour or so, learning how to drive the cars from scratch. In previous games, I would have turned assists on and sat back and relaxed my way through the game. But Project Cars 2 deserves to be set up as authentic, with all assists off, and after a few laps, slowly I was turning in some decent lap times. Driving in Project Cars 2 all comes down to bringing your knowledge of motorsports driving in real life. By that I mean braking in a straight line, turning into the apex of the corner and then applying the throttle gently until it's flat to the floor at the corner exit. Putting together laps in any car is rewarding and a lot of fun. The handling physics and tyre modelling have been overhauled and improved. In the previous title there was a certain on off switch when it came to grip and at times you found yourself having to tiptoe your way through corners so you not to spin off. However, this time around you're able to step the rear of the car out and control the car sliding through the corners and it feels like it's on the edge of losing control. If you're quick enough you can save it and continue tearing up the track. As with motorsports in the real world, you, can, you can't expect to hit the track straight out and put in fast decent laps. You have to go through a few laps to bring the tyres up to their normal, optimal temperature before going on an all-out attack, cutting corners and powering through the apexes. The grip level is terrific, but all good things come to an end, and as the tyres grain and delaminate, the feel of it going away is also a lot more linear and realistic. Most games, you either have it or not. Here, it all slowly fades away. Whilst my choice of controller is the racing wheel, on a normal controller, the game is completely different from Project Cars 1. 
the cars feel more manageable and more controllable. Although it is easier and more responsive with the wheel, using the controller isn't a lost cause, and even if you struggle, there are a range of assists to play with. The career mode is much the same as Project Cars 1, allowing you to choose how you want to play the game. Whether you want to be a zero in karting or Formula Rookie or Formula Ford, or jumping straight in as the hero in a top category. The only difference is that the top two tiers have to be unlocked through career progression. Everything is customizable to your choices from putting in the practice, although I do recommend it, qualifying and race distances, as well as doing full seasons or cutting them down to a time manageable level. With all the different categories to choose from, there is something for everyone. As Project Cars 2 is built as a racing sim, Almost everything on the car can be fiddled and tinkered with to get the right setup. Although at first this may seem daunting, there is a new addition, which is the race engineer, to help you out. Whether it's extra downforce you require or better braking, the engineer will ask you a series of questions through menus on how the car handles and guides you on what to change on the car to help you improve your lap times and push for that win. Weather is at the forefront of the game's key features. And new for Project Cars 2 is the introduction of snowy conditions. Ranging from a modest snowstorm to hazardous blizzard conditions, snow adds a new element to the game. Even better, every track featured can take advantage of the game's weather conditions, dynamic or otherwise. Like the original game before it, Project Cars 2 does a fantastic job of portraying a living track environment, which has been updated to the Live Track 3 system. Dynamic driving lines increases the level of realism, meaning that as it rains, straying off that driving line, simply, you'll be asking for trouble. Whether it's snow or rain, areas of the track will dry differently depending on the available light levels. And as one of the key features of the game, it doesn't disappoint. A wet weather race will differ from those in the dry, and races at night time are an entirely different beast. As there's no sun beaming down on the asphalt, getting heat into the tyres will be a tad more difficult. Throwing rain or snow into the equation is setting yourself up for terrific disaster. In terms of graphics, Project Cars 2 looks awesome. The cars are stunning and the tracks come alive as the time of day progresses, from day to night, as well as the weather. And the sounds of tyres screeching, engines roaring, are all authentic and distinctively different depending on your choice of wheels even down to the squeak of the wiper blades on a dry windscreen. Project Cars 2 brings together all the elements that made its predecessor a success, but it turns up the volume to 100. Whilst there will be those that will struggle at first to come to terms with the handling physics, I urge you to give it time and put in the practice. There is a mammoth of content for the single player career mode, and at launch, online races and championships can be set up and played. For those worried about those hoons who don't use brakes at the first corner, an online competitive racing license that ranks your online play and safety allows you to drive against others who are there for some proper racing as opposed to causing carnage. Overall, Project Cars 2 gets a Roy review of 9 out of 10. It's a thrilling, enjoyable racing experience that is well worth the reward of putting in the time to master the controls. There hasn't been so much on offer since Toka Touring Cars on the PlayStation 2 and this review only scratches the surface of what's on offer. Feel free to leave a like or comment on the post, as well as follow all the fun at Bam Nation at bamnationgaming.com.au. My name is Roy, and this has been a Roy's review of Project Cars 2.